If you watched the Philadelphia Fusion vs NYXL game on the third week, you will remember things were looking bleak for New York as they were down 2-0 in a best of 5 series against Philly. But after making substitutions and bringing in Mano and Pine, NYXL managed to completely reverse sweep Philadelphia. The popular question we are going to address today on Behind the Action is, was it only possible because of Pine? The answer? It's complicated. When Pine was first subbed in on Ilios, Philadelphia immediately felt the pressure. Just by simply existing as Widowmaker, Pine created space for his team while simultaneously putting pressure on the opposition. The only reason this works is because the Fusion know to respect Pine's hitscan abilities. They know he's going to land hits consistently. The thing is, hiding around corners and taking advantage of the map geometry to stay out of line of sight of Pine only goes so far when Sabielby is on Tracer. They have to eventually get on point. All of this is more so amplified by the fact that Pine's Widow is being pocketed by Animo on Mercy. On this first point, the effect of all this is shown by the fact that Philadelphia Fusion is confined themselves to the small room on the left, which restricts any advantages Fusion might have and bottlenecks the team perfectly for NYXL. Of course, later on, Fusion makes the plunge and dives NYXL, albeit diving the wrong person. Instead of diving the exposed backline Widow, they chose to dive Jonak on the high ground, and NYXL simply counterdives, taking out Carpe and Neptuno. Goodbye DPS, goodbye sustain, fight over. As the overtime timer comes on, Snillo jumps on point in a desperate attempt to stall, but is dispatched by Pine in a quick headshot, immediately shutting down any chance the fusion had. On the second map, NYXL played around Pine, giving him the space he needed to do McCree things. He's playing a glass cannon playstyle, getting himself in the fray with high risk but high reward, relying on his mechanical skill and support from his team to get out of trouble. When NYXL gets around 85% on the point, Fusion decides now is the time to push, but Pine is already flanking them. With a quick pick on Boombox, the enemy Zenyatta is eliminated and the Fusion is already a support down. Pine pushes in and gets picked by Carpe, but Animo is there for the resurrect. This shows NYXL's priorities are in the right order, at this point, NYXL is missing their Winston, but that's nothing compared to missing both your supports on the side of the fusion. Behind the action on screen, Pine DMX Poco and dispatches Tracer, winning the fight and ensuring there isn't any last second stalling from fusion, leaving NYXL the map win. On Junkertown, Pine is back on Widow, but doesn't contribute much to the defense of the first point against fusion. He was too late on flanking behind, and the pirate ship was already set up. Pine spent the first point shooting into shields. Not fun. On the second point, however, Pine once again takes the glass cannon approach, playing the aggressive positioning Widow into fusion spawn, picking Mercy first, then Zenyatta straight out of spawn. Pine single-handedly forced Neptuno to use his resurrect early. Along with using his infrared sights, Pine effectively forced fusion to avoid fully engaging or risk getting picked early like we saw with Mercy. Ultimately, Fusion takes the point, Pine remains Widow for the last point solely to mirror Carpe. Fusion as a team outperforms NYXL at the last push and successfully makes it to the end. When it's NYXL's turn to push, they bring out the familiar pirate ship composition, running Bastion behind an Orisha shield. Pine takes the specialist role and again mirrors Carpe's Widow pick. To begin, NYXL is having a rough time. Between Pine dying instantly to the Junkrat spawn trap and being caught red-handed next to a Diva Bomb, he isn't having a stellar performance so far. Amidst the struggle, Libero gets a tire onto Boombox, which is an essential pick. NYXL leaps on the opportunity to take advantage and they end up capping the first point. On second and third point, Pine spends his time shooting into Diva's defense matrix and Arisha's shield. Important pressure is still applied, but not entirely a hard carry for this push. Nonetheless, they reach the end, and it's Fusion's turn to push the cart. Philadelphia managed to push it just past the bridge, but New York's pressure is too great. Pine picks off Fusion's Orissa, Mercy burns her Resurrect, but by then it's too late. Oop. Oh boy. There we go. That's it. Philadelphia Fusion stopped right there. XL is up next, and they again run Pine on Widow. Right out of the gate, Pine gets a beautiful pick on Fusion's main reliable DPS, Junkrat. But ultimately, amounts to nothing. Attempt number two, probably one of the messiest pushes we've seen yet, but NYXL manages to make it work. Neptuno pops alt and takes out Mono and Jonak, but Pine puts himself in prime position to finish him off. Poco is the last remaining force of opposition on the point, but gets baited off by Ark. Top firing away with that SMG. And Mecho boops him off the high ground and demex him. While Carpe takes out Pine, the NOXL grind out the rest of the fusion, and Pine comes back from spawn in time to finish off Fraggy and Poco. 
Well played by NYXL, but this whole sequence is more one team punishing the other rather than a hard carry from an individual. The series goes to a game 5. The tiebreaker map takes place on Oasis, and Philadelphia initially takes the point convincingly. It takes until 99% before NYXL gets their footing, but they manage to flip it when Pine gets a 2k with his tire and quickly cleans up the rest. However, as the match goes on, the tide turns in favor of the fusion, and they take the first map. On the second map, this is where things get interesting. Before the point even unlocks, Pines McCree claims a pick onto Eco, immediately after, Jonak requests a pause. The pause lasts for several minutes. Instantly out of the pause, Eco gets resurrected, Pine takes advantage of the casting animation and kills Neptuno's Mercy, and manages to follow with the kill on Eco again. After doing his damage, Saviobi is there to finish what he started. Fast forward through the match, it is a whole lot of fusion unable to break through NYXL's well-coordinated dives, and Pine is left uncontested in the backline. When New York eventually hits the 99% mark, Pine gets a last second DMEC on Poco, ensuring there'll be little to no contesting on the point. On to the rest of the members of the fusion. Well, New York so far making this particular round look easy and it looks like it's not gonna get any tougher for him. They've already eliminated both tanks. There goes Carpe, Philadelphia Fusion. I think they may need to go to round three here if they're gonna wanna try to win this one. Yeah, this one was all New York. NYXL takes map two. On the final map of the final game, it's gloves off. Pine gets an incredible pick on Fusion's primary support, Boombox, and following up with the second kill on Neptuno's Lucio, essentially ending the fight before it is even begun. This would fall under the category of a hard carry. When NYXL nears the 30% mark, the Fusion decides to perform a hard dive onto Pine, but it proves to be fruitless as he manages to eliminate Carpe, forcing the Fusion to back off. NYXL cleans up and Pine survives a quick 1v1 against Eco. New York Excelsior firing on all cylinders here. That was again. That gonna do it again. As NYXL creeps towards the 99%, the fusion fully commit. Fraggy finds himself out of position and low on health, and Pine takes care of him quickly. Coming back onto point, Pine encounters Eco, who we flashbang right clicks. Mecho finishes off the baby diva, and the rest is Pine's playground, easily taking out Neptuno and Carpe. After seeing this reverse sweep again, it becomes clear to us that Pine was given ample resources and space to be put in a position where he can effectively carry the team. Without this support, the glass cannon would shatter, and NYXL wouldn't be able to use Pine's aggressive playstyle to its fullest potential. So in conclusion, yes, Pine did technically carry the NYXL after they decided to bring him out in a 0-2 series, but it most likely could have not been done without the incredible support and teamwork present in the NYXL roster. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and share it as it really helps us out a lot. Otherwise, to stay up to date with all of our content, be sure to subscribe or hit that bell for notifications. Otherwise, follow us on Twitter for more of our great content.